Hello everybody and welcome back to TJ's Lego Room and today I am finally back in mock mode. I finally am going to show you guys a brand new mock and I am so happy I finally get to do this with you guys. Uh, the last uh, several videos have been about the contest with uh, the Razor Crest Mark II contest and in all honesty this video kind of is too because today we are talking about the Broken Eagle. So this is the ship that I came up with um, originally when I was working through the um, Razor Crest Mark II idea. So once the original Razor Crest blew up, I was like, oh my goodness, what are they going to do for a new ship? And I thought, you know, that'd be fun to build uh, a new version of a Razor Crest or an alternate ship that Mando could use. And I immediately started thinking about it. And there was always one part that stuck out in my mind. And that it was be, oh, sorry, I'm speaking weird. And that that one part was that it would be half a ship. So that should give you a little bit of clue on what's going on here. <laughs> because this literally is a half of a ship. Let's go ahead and turn it so you guys can see the other engine. And some of you may have picked up on this before. So originally this ship, uh, if you can imagine it, would have been split down the middle, would be mirrored on both sides. So it would have a long flat wing on both sides, it'd have two flaps in the back. And so this ship was a symmetrical ship originally. But uh, the wing was sheared off in a battle. And because of that, uh, the ship was damaged pretty bad. But they were able to take the engine off of the old wing and reattach it onto this and strap it back on and, and weld it back on. So these, uh, these metal-ish cages are meant to be a little bit of the, uh, the attachment of the engine back onto the ship. And what's really fun about that is the, uh, the gr grills and stuff here that I added at the end. Uh, it didn't look great without them, but once I added them, everything came together because it almost looks like you've got your arm in a sling in some, in some ways for me. At least that's the impression that I got. And that was the idea behind the Broken Eagle is that it would be half a ship. Now, why half a ship, right? Well, it's because with Grogu, uh, spoiler alert for you, if you haven't seen Mandalorian Season 2, uh, stop it right now. Well, once Grogu dies... Uh, in Mandalorian Season 2. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> that was just a test. Uh, for reals, though, I'm going to spoil stuff. Uh, when Grogu is taken by Luke at the end of Mandalorian Season 2, Mando is now only half of a clan of two. And so that stuck in my mind that I wanted it to be a half a ship to represent that Mando was now half a clan, that Din Djarin is only half a clan now. And I think, I think it was actually a real fun visual idea that just stuck with me the entire time. Um, the other part that I wanted is I wanted the ship to be a single level, and be that was because I wanted him to imagine that he had a single purpose. Um, now, the Razor Crest wasn't really a two-level ship. Only the cockpit was raised up above the sleeping quarters and the toilet. Um, so, unfortunately, you know, that wasn't... Uh, that, that didn't really come through in the idea that I had. But the single level was fine, even though the metaphor or the uh, represent, representative nature of that didn't quite come through. The half a ship was great, and there was only one other part that I wanted, is I wanted some kind of a windscreen on the back of the ship. And so you can see here, now a couple of the contest entrants will know that I had been working on something similar to this for quite a while, and I, I saw a couple of the entrants use the razor crest piece on the back of their ship and i went ah oh, now i can't do it but in the end i ended up going back to it because i'm like just because somebody else does it doesn't mean i can't right <laughs> um and the reason i wanted some sort of a windscreen on the back of the ship is because there'd he'd always have that little part of him that was looking back that was looking backwards towards grogu that was looking back on the time that he had with uh with the young with the child so that those were some of the metaphors and things that i came up with everything else is pretty much just aesthetically pleasing to me um now of course you may notice that this 
is not part of the ship necessarily. This is actually designed off of a crate and the crate was designed off of the concept art that I found for I believe it is Rebels or it could even be from Clone Wars but the crates that were carried by those big Imperial Triangle ships I don't know if you know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm sure some of you do and some of you don't. But anyway, there's these giant pyramid-like ships that the Empire used to haul stuff. Um, I can't remember if it was a Clone, er Clone Wars era thing. Um, oh, something comes to my mind that says it is, but neither here nor there. This is basically designed off of those cargo containers. And so what happened is after the ship was salvaged and the engine was put back on, it was then modified additionally with this cargo container that was added onto the ship. And then a section of the main body was cut out to be able to use that cargo container. And then, of course, there was a panel on the cargo container that was cut and transformed with a hinge into a boarding ramp for the front. So originally this ship would have had uh, four boarding ramps, two in the middle here underneath the wings and then two in the back. And so now because we've covered up one of them here and covered up the other one with the cargo container, it now needs to have the one. Of course, I'm sure a lot of you guys are hoping to see on the inside, which is exactly what I think we're going to go ahead and do now. Um, I'm just really proud of this ship, and so it's going to take me a little bit of time to get through it. So I, I hope you guys can be a little patient with me. Um, before we run inside, I am really proud of how the engines turned out. One of the things that I saw when I wanted to do the half a ship and then reattach that engine to give it a little bit more balance, um, I wanted these engines to be similar to the razor crest but like elongated i wanted to like squish them and holy cow i i didn't even realize that lego had the pieces to make that work until i started working on it and i was so happy that the idea actually functioned um unfortunately i can't really show you the inside without first showing you the uh the one of the coolest parts of the weapons of the ship all right Oh my gosh, some weapons of the ship. I haven't even talked about that. All right, we're, we'll go inside real quick. <laughs> All right, now what I can do here is the way I designed this, I can actually pull this engine off without too much uh, hassle. And once we open it up, we can see inside, of course, I'm not gonna be able to totally reveal the inside here. But if we can look inside, hold on just a second. We can see there's a guy in there. There's a there's some guy inside. What's he doing? Well, I will tell you what he's doing. Oh, actually, I can think I'll remove this to give it a little more light. Nope, nope, that didn't work at all. All right, so that little guy inside there is actually sitting in a gunner's chair for the top gunner position, and those are attached, and they spin around. <laughs> so it's. It was inspired from the Trexler Marauder from uh, Mandalorian Season 2 that had the gun turret that went all the way down into the, the vehicle and it turned with the ship and I'm, or with the, uh, with the seat, the turret and seat turned together. I'm like, oh, I could probably do that. And I did. <laughs> uh, we'll get a little bit better look here. Let me pull that out. So I can actually remove quite a few different panels on the top here. But we're going to remove just the front two for now. Oh, come on, buddy. All right, there we go. All right, so that's all connected right there. And so when you spin that around, the guy spins around with it. <laughs> it's actually really fun to do. But one of the really cool parts, I think, is that uh, when you take the guy out of the gunner chair, you can actually fold it up and then stow it back in the old doorway right here in the ship. Now the gun, of course, would have to be constantly turned uh, this direction, so towards the, the remaining wing, but that would let you uh, kind of store this out of the way um, so that uh, you can walk past it a little bit easier because this does take up a little bit of room on the inside. So I just wanted to show you guys that because that's, that's one of the parts that I really enjoy but it wasn't like a super technical thing and it, it's not even i think the most impressive part of the ship but it's just one of those fun little details i was able to add that i was just really excited about so i hope you guys enjoyed that 
little peek. <laughs> now let's go. Uh, let's get into the inside. Oh, I will show you. I do have a little bit of greebling here uh, that sh you can see on the inside, and that just helps me to. Uh, that just added a little bit of extra detail to the inside. All right, so let's go ahead and throw this up. So right at the bottom here, that was a, a roof piece. Uh, right at the bottom, underneath the, uh, oh, sorry, I hit the mic. Right underneath the spinning chair is the hatch that goes down to uh, like an, an external hatch, like the Razor Crest had, where you could land on something and create an airlock underneath. And I even went so far as to include a round piece underneath with a tile right above it, one of those uh, inverted tiles, so that that idea carried through all the way, <laughs> even though it doesn't actually open, which would be a fun challenge, but not one that I had uh, finished by the time the, the contest ended. And I did actually stop working on it when the contest ended, so I hope you guys can appreciate that I, I did this within the time frame, just like everybody else. Um, in the cargo container, we just have a couple of beds, and then of course some modified sections here with uh, some panels and stuff like that. Oh, sorry, I keep hitting the mic. Um, obviously there are more things that I could have added in here. I thought about adding a, like a desk and a chair over here or separating it out and putting in a, a toilet just like the Razor Crest did. But when I got to that point, I'm like, ah, but this is, this is kind of, uh, salvaged and made up on the spot. So I didn't want to make it too pristine just in case. I didn't want to have too many things because it's pretty bare bones when uh, Mando gets it, I imagined. Uh, one other part that I really am proud of uh, is the transition here between the uh, the crest, or sorry, between the original Eagle ship and the cargo container. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom in here on it. So if you look right there, I did not actually build these two things together. I actually built them separate and actually removed sections from both sides so that it looked a little bit more dirty and it provided a very clean transition. Since the container is dark red, you can see where the dark red ends with a plate going outwards. And then you can see that there's another plate right inside there without the tiles that would have normally been on the paneling. And that's the edge of the ship. So like all the paneling that's on the outside of the ship here just continues right through, but that section is cut out. And then we've got uh, some panels right down here in the bottom that uh, smooth it out and provide an attachment point. Now, the other part that I did cheat a little bit on, as much as I wanted those separate, uh, the container is now actually the support for the wing and the attachment there. There would probably be some inverted sloping that would come quite a ways out on the wing to support it. And by putting this container there, you remove that supporting. So while it is an aftermarket addition, you still would have to uh, weld the container onto the ship itself and bolt it or whatever other attachments uh, you want to do. All right, now let's move to the cabin, shall we? All right, so as we walk through and get closer to the cockpit here, you can see that on either side, if I could be very, very gentle here, on either side is actually a weapons compartment going towards the cockpit. Uh, I had this picture in my mind that when Mando was shown the ship, he came in through the front doorway here and he walked through and he got to this point and he's looking at the chair that's in the wall there and he looks backwards at the gunnery turret and storage area and then he looks forward and he says, I'll take it. And the camera kind of zooms backwards and you see all the weapons uh, in the hallway right there going towards the cockpit. And so that was... I had a lot of fun thinking about this cinematically, and it was it was quite a joy, actually. Um, we'll zoom over to the cockpit real quick since we uh, went that direction. Let's go ahead and continue that. Uh, the cockpit, I'm trying to remember how it comes off. Is it just this? Yeah, okay. So just the windscreen comes off, but we have a nice little uh, Falcon-esque 
uh, walkway right here, which uh, was pretty fun. I think it worked out pretty well. And then we just have two seats in here. We've got one for Din Djarin. Uh, this is the Treble on Tatooine version. And then we just have one more chair. And then I did leave some jumpers here for a second uh, passenger seat, but I left it open um, just so that you can walk through it. So it's kind of a just an open area that could have a seat or you wouldn't necessarily have to. But yeah, the seat can go on either side. They're just those uh, one by three double jumper pieces, double stud jumpers. All right. Um, I will go ahead and take this moment right now to show you the very front of the ship right here. Uh, this cannon is actually one of the main parts that was inspired from the original Razor Crest. The Razor Crest started as an A-10 Warthog, which is a military vehicle, military plane. And that plane is built around a giant Gatling gun on the front of the ship, just like this uh, big gun here. So when I designed the cockpit, I always knew I wanted some big Gatling multi-laser cannon blaster laser gun, whatever, <laughs> on the front here. Uh, because I wanted to harken back to that A10 Warthog design, um, so that was that was actually the main part that inspired me from the Razor Crest. The engines being flattened didn't really, um, so it's a really roundabout way to be inspired by the Razor Crest because it's not necessarily a, a piece that you would look at and go, "Oh yeah, that." Gun on the front is like the A10 Warthog that the Razor Crest was inspired by. <laughs> but that's actually what it is so there you go um, as we move backwards uh, I, th I can remove this panel but I think we got to go all the way to the back first to show you how it how it works so uh, now this back fin this uh, can actually move and so this is in flight mode so it's not quite vertical it's just on a slight angle and then in landing mode, it actually goes like this. And the reason it does that is because then the wing would be out of the way of the rear uh, exit. Wow, without all the extra weight on here balancing it, it's getting a little tipsy backwards. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll go to the gunner station here. Now, the gunner station is pretty cool, I think because it not only uses the razor crest part, but it technically is open down inside. Now, obviously I don't have the pieces uh, that are round like this that would give us an open hollow entryway, but if you can just imagine that these pieces would be hollow going back into the ship, then we can just pull that off. And it's just held on by this one jumper right here. Sorry if I bumped the microphone again. I'm sorry guys. Um, so then we just have this generic trooper guy in here. Uh, this is actually the guy I've been using the whole time to measure the ship <laughs> and make sure it was actually big enough. So once we have the windscreen removed there, this panel comes off and we can then see down inside the ship, although we can see it from the side as well. We just have a large container. Let me pull that out here. We just have this large container that looks like the um, Rogue One containers. However, this one is a little bit wider and of course I uh, use the classic space colors, the blue and gray with the uh, trans yellow pieces on there. <laughs> um, I got a fun story about those containers actually. Uh, and then on both sides we have an opening ramp uh, and this ship originally was an, uh, a gunboat or a gunship. Um, not all the guns that are on it now were always on there. It's mostly just uh, uh, it was mostly just the front one and the uh, ones that are mounted on the engines. But this would have been where most of your troops would have disembarked uh, once you landed. I even imagine that there could have been some uh, guns underneath the wing that helped with the landing. If it, if you guys have seen my Doctor Doom ship, I've always liked the underwing cannons on that thing. So I might continue that. And it just occurs to me that the cannons that were underneath the engine fell off. <laughs> I think they got bumped by a kid. Let me grab those real quick. Oh, sorry about that. That's embarrassing. Part of my ship is missing. <laughs> no wonder it looked kind of weird. So we actually had a couple large cannons here. 
and they go right under here. We've got a bunch of greebles and stuff underneath there as well to just make it look a little bit more interesting. Let's see if I can get a good shot of those for you. All right, guys. There we go. So these would have just been attached uh, to the engine itself, uh, and that would be part of the gunship style or gunboat style of the of the ship. So there we go. That looks. See that already. That looks a little bit more complete, doesn't it? Just having those uh, cannons underneath there. <laughs> Good job. All righty. Oh, wow. I think I think I might have covered everything, actually. I think we're about there. Oh, uh, one last thing on the back end. Obviously, it's very easy to see that the uh, large secondary wing was knocked off uh, on this side. But if you look somewhat closely, not super closely, but, you know, close enough, you can see that there's actually some guns here that are controlled by this gunner station. But the guns were also torn off on that side as well so it's just i really wanted it to feel like it was half of a ship and i think we nailed i i, I think i nailed it <laughs> i think i got it down really well and that it looks like the ship is incomplete it looks like half of it's missing but it looks like it could totally fly and still be a legitimate ship in star wars and i really do believe that um well once again, I'm just going to say thank you to everybody who participated in the Razor Crest Mark II contest. Um, this week was a little crazy, but I wanted to let everybody know I have heard you, and I am planning on uh, putting up more detailed pictures or links to videos um, for the people who uh, ended up win winning the contest. If you go to the contest winning one, uh, the uh, announcement of the winner, sorry, words are bad. If you go to the contest winner section um, or of the video in the description, the Mythosaur, he actually uploaded a video for his entry and that actually worked out really well. Um, so you can go uh, and see how he did. And uh, yeah, if, if you want to, you don't have to, obviously. <laughs> um, yeah, again, I'm just super happy with how everything has turned out. Um, you guys did a fantastic job. I'm excited for the, uh, a couple of changes that are coming up in TJ's Lego room. I am having a real fun time uh, doing some puzzle builds and uh, coming up with a few other little, not sneak peeks, but uh, little extra perks for people who are patrons. Um, obviously, you know, not everybody can be a patron, and I totally get that. Um, but for the people who who can and decide to, I really do appreciate it. So, all right, we'll get this thing put back together. Very nice, and we got our guns still on the engines, and we've got our little cargo container here. Um, and that is the Broken Eagle. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering about instructions. Well, uh, I will be starting the instructions to this soon. And the reason I haven't started them yet is because I have another really big set of instructions that I've been working on for a while and that people have been asking for ever since the ship was revealed. And that ship is the YT-985. So be looking ahead for those instructions, which will be coming out very soon. Uh, and then probably a month later will be the instructions for this ship. There's a lot of places where I, I think I need to clean up. So uh, this ship is going to be a little bit out of the way as far as the instructions coming out. But do not worry. They are the next large instructions on my list. And I do like to break up my schedule a little bit between large and small. So sorry again. I know this video is a little bit rambling and I know it's really long. But I am very proud of this ship. I'm very happy with how it turned out. Um, the, the engines are, were one of the first things that I built. Um, then the wing and then the cockpit and then the back end is kind of the direction that I went. And the container was in the middle in there somewhere. But this has been such a fun project. And I hope everybody else had as much fun as I did because I really, I, I love this kind of stuff. 
where I think it looks like it could be in Star Wars. Um, obviously, the name Broken Eagle is a little bit of a uh, a nod towards the idea that there are Falcons in Star Wars. Otherwise, the Millennium Falcon wouldn't make any sense. And so I went for another bird-like creature, especially the shaping of this ship is very eagle-like. We've got our, our head and our beak. We've got our two wings and then our extended body out the back with the large tail feather. Um, obviously, it's a little different. This would like have a two-tail feather <laughs> ship, but um, I really... I'm really happy with how this turned out and I can't wait to get the instructions put together so that if you're interested, you can build it yourself as well. But in the meantime, have fun. And until we see you next time in TJ's Lego room, play well. Bye.